again everyone and thanks so much for being here for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first, uh, this is a obviously a webcam shot of uh, Umiat Airfield up in the North Slope there uh, of the airport here and you can tell a little bit of uh, looks like new snow fell across the area there and the North Slope kind of a disturbance up there but you can see also breaks in the clouds so it's not very active and whatever fell up there wasn't too much at all just kind of a light dusting. Moving on to satellite imagery there's the system up there I spoke of kind of spin right there near the uh, Colville River there around the Umiat airfield on out to the Arctic coast but uh, mounts up there are very light if anything fell at all and then that cloud mass kind of trails into the across the northeast interior and also over the uh, Northway area, they had some little bit of light snow, but nothing heavy at all there. Nothing more than a hundredth of an inch water equivalent. And then we had this weakening frontal boundary, or continues to weaken as it pushed into the interior. And that caught, caught some moisture down here coming northward. And they had uh, a little bit, bit heavier rainfall amounts, southern Kenai Peninsula along the coast. Upslope areas had about three quarters of an inch today. Otherwise, Iliamna just picked up 15 hundredths of an inch. A uh, break across here to the south of that, Bristol Bay and toward Kodiak, and then some more rain with this uh, small system that brought two-thirds of an inch of rain to Unalaska Dutch Harbor area uh, in the last 12 hours and about uh, just under half an inch to Cold Bay. Other weak system here brought some showers. This one right there brought areas of light rain showers today to the uh, southeast coast, but uh, mostly uh, over the southern areas there with uh, Annette picking about 15 hundredths of it, or about a tenth of an inch at most in those locations down there, with Annette picking about 12 hundredths of an inch, or uh, Ketchikan, I can't remember which one it was, but those are like the heaviest amounts with that, so that's moving off. Nothing to the north except clearing going on up here over the northern pan and eastern north Gulf Coast. See some clearing here. Looks like uh, north of the Alaska Range in the upper Tanana, mid Tanana Valley, and then kind of off to the southwest here. Norton Sound seeing a little bit of clearing. And some, again, light uh, snow flurries or showers here. Uh, north slope of that weak trough, locally down in the uh, upper Yukon Valley, but pretty isolated up through here. And we've got uh, this system, actually, a uh, little more of a rain producer than this weak low is here. Uh, but that's uh, going to be coming up to the northeast and then just some weak or scattered showers over the Aleutians. And for tonight, we'll see that one low tracks northward to about west of uh, Cape Newenham there, and it'll spread some moisture right along the outer coastline. Areas of light rain down across uh, the Alaska Peninsula here, but it'll clear out there at Cold Bay, or end anyway with a few breaks in the clouds tonight. Oh, from about Port Hyden, or possibly Port Hyden, definitely Nelson Lagoon's sand point on over to on Alaska, looking at a dry night tonight, and occasional light rain, that remnants of that uh, frontal boundary and trough shift northward. So it looks like uh, areas of light rain or showers, Kenai Peninsula and the uh, North Gulf Coast here, west of uh, Cape Yakutaga, up into Prince William Sound, nothing heavy. And then uh, all, otherwise to the north, uh, nothing, no wind, no uh, precipitation, and probably uh, just some scattered clouds, or partly mostly cloudy, a few isolated snow showers farther to the north, but really nothing significant. In the southeast coast, showers are gone. Look for uh, variable clouds and clearing. And this next system here pushing across the Alaska Peninsula really weakens into a trough tomorrow here. Kind of slows down just some scattered showers along that trough line there. And also for this one here coming over the top of some ridging there taking place between another low that shifts across the southern panhandle and, and then a strong or another system right here. Uh, that's going to uh, bring another round of light rain chances into the southern panel. It may spread northward as far as uh, Petersburg and Wrangell, but uh, back to the northwest there, just look for a partly sunny day. And eastern interior looking pretty good too with some clearing. 
and otherwise still that's a uh, very mostly cloudy scattered flurry condition going on up here over the northern part of the state but the arctic coast could see clearing with dry weather this trough now the whole uh, upper system along with the surface starting to shift southward this system will be coming northeastward here uh, monday night and jump ahead to Tuesday, you'll see it troughs out, it really weakens here as it comes up. So I'll spread rain and increasing winds into Kodiak Island, uh, but it's going to get uh, overpowered by a much stronger system coming up from the south there, 982 millibars to about this position Tuesday afternoon. Uh, good warm front and good slug of moisture coming northward with it, but that's going to really uh, take the energy out of the one coming up, but uh, hang together enough to spread some rain possibly into the south coast of the Panhandle with uh, showers over the northern Panhandle, and I wouldn't look for much sun on Tuesday there. And still dry for the most part over the interior, just isolated rain or snow showers. Maybe some light stuff up here, flurries or very light snow from the Eastern Brooks Range over toward Kaktovik, Barter Island. Otherwise, uh, really nothing significant, just increasing winds here, even over the southwest interior. So you can see the tightening gradient here, and it looks like uh, good gales here coming in ahead of this uh, warm front, Kodiak Island, and this portion of the Alaska Peninsula. And otherwise, this weakening low near the Pueblo also keep uh, showers and cloudy skies going there, but the gradient starts tightening up. So a little bit more of a breeze here for the western Bering Sea down in toward Adak and Atka. In those areas, southeast coast, uh, after a dry day, looking at a better chance, as I mentioned, rain spreading eastward here with westerly flow uh, to the south coast, showers to the north, and moving into lows tonight in the 30s there for the Panhandle, teens, Copper River Basin, teens lower 20s, eastern interior, back to 5 to 15 there, Brooks Range, and then 10 to 20 on the Arctic coast, milder west, and in the upper 20s to lower 30s over the southwest part of the state. And the highs for Monday afternoon, mid 40s here, mid to upper 40s possibly there for the uh, northeast Bristol Bay, on down the Alaska Peninsula, 47 also for Kodiak, and 45 to 50 for the highs there across the Panhandle. And lower to mid 30s here, Kuskokwim Valley up into the uh, lower and mid uh, Yukon River Valley areas. And then well, actually that pattern extends into the Tanana Valley as well with highs 25 to 35 for the Arctic coast. Lows Tuesday morning, teens eastern Beaufort Sea coastline, lower 20s on the west side, and lower 20s also in the Tanana Valley. Otherwise, teens from Copper River, ba or Copper River Basin northward to the upper Yukon Valley with lows in the uh, upper 30s, or yeah, 30s to lower 40s there for the Panhandle. And moving on to the highs Tuesday afternoon, not much higher than your lows, although uh, 45 to 50 here with the southern areas, to, with a 50 there, mainly around the uh, central coast on down across uh, Metlakatla and Annette, otherwise mid 40s, and lower 30s Copper River Basin, and lower to mid 30s in the Tanana Valley, and 20s up north. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather, we've got uh, IFR here, across the Gulf of Alaska, up into Prince William Sound, and uh, a little bit into the Western Copper River Basin. Also, most of the Kenai Peninsula, and uh, from about, uh, I'll say, Kenai or, or so northward, marginal areas of IFR here, back across Southwest Interior, and uh, looks like North Side Seward Peninsula, then pretty solid there from the Western Brooks Range along the mountains, out up along the Arctic coast. Out west, marginal VFR. And then for the afternoon, we've got some IFR, uh, developing here and showing up over the northern Bering Sea just north of St. Paul there and then the areas of all the way up to the Seward Peninsula, Yukon Delta Coast, Southwest Mountains here, Togiak Bay and uh, in across mostly the uh, eastern slopes of the western Alaska range there and IFR, Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast, marginal for Yakutat and then mostly VFR for the Panhandle, and then some VFR on the lee side of the Alaska Range in the central and upper Tana Valley. And for Tuesday morning, IFR here, a zone from St. Lawrence Island and the Seward Peninsula, right on down across, uh, looks like Cusquam Valley here, as well as the uh, deltas into the, uh, in toward the uh, Iliamna Lake area. And then uh, really no change here, eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, uh, some IFR, and then marginal just to the south, marginal VFR, Gulf of Alaska, right up along the coast of the Panhandle. And for the afternoon Tuesday, IFR here from actually 
Talkeetna Mountains there and along the Denali Highway down across the Kenai Peninsula and Cook Inlet to Kodiak Island, all IFR, Gulf of Alaska, and to again, uh, well about Cape Yakutat, a little to the east there, Yakutat right on the edge of the marginal VFR, and the Panhandle uh, marginal VFR and areas of VFR. And for Anatovic, tomorrow marginal VFR, same forecast for Adigan, occasionally marginal for both those passes, Lake Clark and Merrill, also marginal VFR again with uh, some IFR, if it occurs, will be on the eastern entrance of both passes there, a little bit better on the west side. And for rainy, marginal VFR throughout the day, windy uh, VFR through the pass and out the north end, but the southern uh, entrance still vulnerable to some marginal VFR throughout the entire day. And for Isabel, occasionally marginal, Mintasta VFR, chance of marginal VFR on the south entrance, and Tanita, marginal. And Portage uh, looks marginal with IFR, lowest conditions eastern entrance, passage canal, and for Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels 2,000 feet here from Cape Nuenam along the northern coast of Bristol Bay and then pretty much hugging the coastline here in the Gulf and then cutting across the northern Panhandle, 4,000 feet down toward Prince of Wales Island, Ketchikan and Net, and those areas. And 2,000 uh, kind of just south of the central and western Aleutians. Icing, uh, not, nothing really significant tomorrow. The best chance of seeing any light rime icing, light, or, light rime or mixed icing would be in uh, these four areas here. Eastern Aleutians, possibly, and real narrow band. I probably should have just dropped that. It's kind of an over forecast here for Kodiak and the Prince William Sound area and the southern panhandle. Uh, could see some. That's a, actually the best chance would be here. It looked like the most moisture would be over the southern southeast coast. But even that, probably anything considerable in the, or anything moderate would be pretty limited and isolated. And for the jet stream here, Big trough still remains out over the Bering Sea, and a good jet here, 130, 140 knots, kind of, uh, <clears throat> well, the main branch takes off to the east here across the Queen Charlotte's and then kind of diverges. You can see a weak trough right through here, kind of lifting through for tomorrow, and it looks like uh, following that, uh, early part of next week, or into Wednesday, this uh, trough with some cold air dropping down will link up with the uh, milder jet here to the south, and a disturbance in the whole thing will start to shift northeastward here and bring another probably pretty good storm into the Gulf of Alaska. That'd be about uh, midweek. And for the uh, 9,000 foot winds, low pressure here still out over the Bering Sea. Not much change from yesterday. And another trough here just south of the Alaska Peninsula. 20 knot winds, 20 to 30 knot winds out over the Aleutians. And uh, maybe up to uh, 10 to 15 there for the uh, southeast coast. Pretty light over the interior. Light winds also at 3,000 feet over much of interior Alaska here, and maybe 10 to up to 20 knots there on the north side of that uh, weak low. Again, another one south of, the, uh, south of the Panhandle, and then a trough out here over the Bering Sea. And again, eventually something will develop, and the next day we'll get a stronger storm coming in uh, next couple of days out. And then turbulence, occasional moderate chop here uh, over the central Aleutians and the southwest mountains. When you think of a national park, you probably envision wide open natural spaces undisturbed by human activity. There are indeed such places, but even in some of the most remote areas of a place like Kenai Fjords National Park in Alaska, the mark of man is present. Marine debris is a menace to the farthest reaches of our globe, and even designated national park lands are not immune. In the summer of 2009, the Resurrection Bay Conservation Alliance, a grassroots conservation organization based in Seward, Alaska, decided to do something about the marine debris fouling the beaches of Kenai Fjords National Park. Marine Debris Coordinator Tim Johnson had first-hand experience with the issue. The summer before, uh, my wife and I, Michelle, had done a paddle from Seward, a uh, sea kayak paddle from Seward to Homer. Really, our eyes were open to some areas that we didn't realize there was so much accumulation. It was very really deceiving up front. You couldn't really get a feel for the, the extent and impact of it. You've got this, this, this nice high tide line that's quite pristine, and you really don't get a picture for the, the impact and the amount of uh, debris 
in that area until you get behind those storm berms. You get back into the lagoons and the, the vegetation around those lagoons. And then you see the, the absolute extent back into that veg and how intertwined and enmeshed um, these decades of trash deposition. So we were just appalled by that and said we, we got to get something together on a larger scale. The Resurrection Bay Conservation Alliance is a local um, nonprofit community organization, and they have been instrumental in helping um, the Park Service obtain funding to to get uh, a boats, larger boats, to help move the debris, and they get volunteer labor and organize the work trips. And so it's really a partnership between the Park Service and the community to help get out and really get a project done that, in and of itself, any one group couldn't do it on their own. Most of that trash was baggable, however, there were large items, huge, you know, piles of hauser line, uh, for example, that, you know, we just had to hoist up onto the boat. The volunteers didn't just bag, haul, and hoist the garbage, but also carefully recorded what types of debris were collected. In many ways, the debris itself is a resource. Um, archaeologists use middens, the trash heaps, um, as a way of analyzing past cultures, and in one sense, Marine debris is a form of a midden. It's a trash heap that left for the future would be something that people could use to analyze our culture. It may not say the best things about our culture or everything that we want, but we need to be able to document what we've done um, so that we can preserve that legacy, um, make sure that we as a society don't forget what we've, what we've been doing. We had two larger categories of, of, of marine debris that we picked up. Um, commercial fishing um, means like, um, say, uh, gill nets, um, large hauser lines, anything that, that would be associated with more of a commercial fishing scale. And then the second category was, was more recreational fishing and household, you know, which would be you know, general plastics, um, you know, things like that. Um, so we had about a 75% of the commercial fishing uh, marine debris element and about 25% of the recreational and household further out the bay. And we had the exact opposite the closer we got to Seward uh, within the bay. It was about 25% commercial uh, fishing versus 75% recreational fishing and, and household. The trash is not just unsightly for park visitors, but also poses threats to wildlife and marine habitat. Really one of the larger issues now that you go to this plastic that has, uh, can really get into the food web and affect the food web differently than something like glass. These substances, for instance, all these polystyrene blocks that are breaking down into all these little crumbly bits are, are further breaking down on a microscopic level and uh, how much of an impact that has you know, in this ecosystem is yet to be determined, but I think it's got pretty high potential. Uh, you know, well known the sea turtles will eat plastic bags floating in the water. They look like jellyfish to a sea turtle and um, obviously a plastic bag doesn't uh, go well in the digestive system of a turtle. Um, albatross will see small pieces of plastic floating on the surface and think they're small fish and other food sources and 
eat that in their stomachs, especially in some of the um, northwestern Hawaiian islands. It, they, they'll find dead albatross that have starved to death with a full stomach and it's full of pl pieces of plastic. We're affecting our local areas this way, uh, but we need to be thinking about it from more of a state and, and a global international uh, scale. And, and most importantly, to, to try and focus on prevention of it coming in the first place. Because we're just going to see this continuing you know, to build up on our beaches unless we're able to, to get a little bit more of an approach on, on prevention on the front end. Marine debris is really a global problem um, you know, in all the oceans and you know, there are many different sources. Global shipping is one. Fishing debris from commercial fishing, um, recreational boating activity, activity on land, stuff blowing off land, washing down streams, people just throwing stuff on the shore. Though the problem can seem overwhelming, Johnson remains upbeat about making a positive difference. No, you gotta, you gotta start locally. You gotta, you know, take control of what you can do and, and, and make something with that and, and try and, you know, move on from there. Overall, more than nine tons of debris was removed from the beaches of Kenai Fjords National Park and transported back to Seward to be deposited in a landfill. People gave a lot to the project in order to make it happen. That was um, awesome. One of the most amazing experiences I've ever um, had be able to put that, that large of a group of volunteers together, dedicated um, volunteers to put that much effort and, and give that much time and pull all these the different agencies together to see it all happen um, was, yeah, it was, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah, it was very fulfilling um, experience. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis, uh, a few changes now showing up. Uh, of course, no, nothing its really too noticeable up here to the north, but a uh, little bit of new ice uh, formed south of Barrier Islands uh, on the east side, but hardly anything at all. In fact, um, actually, Norton Sound or Norton Bay seeing some new ice and also areas over toward Gullivan. A little bit of uh, ice showing up there in the satellite. Moving on to coastal water forecast, variable 10, south coast of the Panhandle tomorrow, 7 to 8 foot seas. South to southeast, 10 to 15 there for the north coast and northeast, light northeast winds at 10 for uh, Clarence Strait and northerlies at 10 knots, pretty light for the central northern inside waters, seasonal more than two feet. And for Tuesday, southeast 15, central and southern inside waters here with uh, three foot seas, south 15 Lynn Canal, and seas remain at three feet there. South winds 20 here on the south coast with eight, nine to 10 foot seas. Small craft advisors on the north coast, 25 knots from the south southeast. And for Prince William Sound tomorrow, east winds at 15 knots. Southerly winds at, 50, at uh, actually 10 to 15 knots for the north Gulf coast, four to five foot seas. And we've got south at 10, pretty light for the Barren Islands. Southeast 15, Kamishak Bay, Cook Inlet, variable to east, only at 10 knots or so, two to three foot seas. I'll look for Tuesday, northeast 15, northern Cook Inlet, and uh, northeast 20, southern Cook Inlet. Afternoon winds, or winds coming up, uh, increasing throughout the day to 30 knots from the east for Kamishak Bay. So small craft advisories, both for Kamishak Bay and the Barren Islands for east winds. And east 15, Prince Liam Sound, east 20 on the western north Gulf Coast, southeast 20 on the eastern coast. And you can see uh, picking up there as you head east to about 30 knots. And Kodiak Island, south to southeast winds tonight, 15, three to five foot seas. Sitkanak, the, the Cape Sarachev, southwest at 15, with six foot seas, north side of the Alaska Peninsula, Bering Sea side, southwest 20, southeast 20 for Bristol Bay. And moving on to Tuesday, uh, east to southeast winds, 25 knots here for the Alaska Peninsula. East winds coming up to 30 knots for Bristol Bay and from Castle Cape to Sitkanak and Sitkanak up the east side of Kodiak in those marine zones, southeast 30, 11 foot seas, east 25 for Shilakoff Strait. And for the uh, western Aleutians, central Aleutians as well for tomorrow, northwest 25 knots, seas running 8 to or 7 to 10 feet. 
and then they take uh, kind of a westerly or try to turn more westerly, west northwest 15 Unmac Island, variable here for Unalaska Island 15 to 20 knots. And then for Tuesday, northwest 20 across the eastern Aleutians here with seas running 5 to 6 feet. Small craft advisories, ADEC and Atkin, northwest 25 to 30, seas up to 10 feet. And northwest 30 out to about Kiska Island, then it becomes west to 20 over towards Yumi and Atu. And for the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, small craft advisories, east to 25. Tomorrow, north 10 for the Pribiloffs, east 15, St. Matthew Island, northern Bering Sea to St. Lawrence Island, northeast 15 to 20. And then for Tuesday, northeast 20 for St. Lawrence Island, and east winds here along the southwest coast, uh, only 15 knots north of Nunavak Island, but 30 knots south of the island, southeast only 10 for the Perbloffs, northeast 25, St. Matthew Island. And for the eastern Boulevard Sea coast, again, uh, holding on to the small craft advisories there, east 25, 7 to 8 foot seas, 20 knots on the central coast from the east at, with 7 foot seas, and then winds uh, 10 knots here all the way down to Cape Thompson, Wales to Cape Thompson, northeast 15. And for Tuesday, northeast 15, again, Wales to Cape Thompson. Then easterly winds from Cape Thompson, 10 to 15 here on the west side, northeast to 10 on the central coast, and down to 15 knots, but staying east there for the eastern coastline. And for tonight, a uh, couple of weak troughs might kick off some flurries or very light snow showers here just crossing the border and maybe up on the central western Arctic coast. Otherwise, nothing going on really over the uh, central northern interior. And weakening system keeps it uh, kind of damp and cloudy here, south central Alaska, and uh, maybe some scattered mixed precipitation, but light in this next system uh, coming up spreads uh, rain across or into Bristol Bay in the north coast of the uh, Bristol Bay area, Togiak Bay up to Nunavak Island, and some rain in the north Gulf Coast, as I mentioned, clearing out for the panhandle. And then a chance of rain with another system as it scoots by mostly to the south. This system here is going to wash out the next day into this trough as a much stronger storm spreads moisture and kind of overruns the whole mess. So increasing wind and rain throughout the day for Kodiak Island and uh, also Bristol Bay to a lesser extent, mostly dry over the interior and a better chance of rain on the south coast of the Panhandle. Thanks very much for joining us. I'll see you again tomorrow. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.